So that's my that's my sort of big tip is make sure that if you do online that somebody has a game, someone or something to play against, or else you'll just lose that user and will probably never come back. Uh, so uh, I did, as I mentioned at the start of this video, it's not a tutorial; it's more of a just talking and an update and maybe some tips. But I did want to give a quick code overview. Now I'm not going to go into the details of this uh, very specifically, but maybe just a general sort of uh, idea for intermediate users. This might help you a little bit. So uh, inside of Unity, this is the main game scene here. So this is basically where you know what you're seeing right here on the web version. And what I do is I load a script, which is basically the online script. And what I've tried to do is keep all the online code into one single script. Now, it's not a big game, it's not complicated, it's just passing data back and forth every, every time you throw the bird. And it also passes score data back and forth between the two clients. So it's very, very simple, so that's why I've kept it all in one script. Uh, and this is pretty much my first, maybe second attempt at online code. I did, I did some online coding uh, about two years ago, but I'm very new to this, so it actually, it did like, mess my head a little bit trying to figure it out. You know, it, it, it gave me a headache almost a nosebleed trying to figure this out but I really just from playing Ninja Birds X a little bit online with uh, some other players I already can see the value uh, and, the, and the, the fun the fun factor in developing you know making games online so that players can play together it's much much better than single player in my opinion so um, so just just very briefly, all we do is the first thing when we come into uh, into this script is we call Photon Network, connect to use it, connect to using settings, and then a, a version number. So that tries to connect to the to the ser connects the game to the server, and then it says what version it is. Uh, and you have separate versions so that if you build if you're testing a new version, you can call that 0 0.3, and it won't affect the version that you've got live, which is 0 0.2 or whatever version that you call it. Uh, once it tries to connect, then it will try to find a lobby. Uh, it will try to find a random room, um, and this one here. Once it joins the lobby, this is all done behind the scenes. It doesn't have to. You don't have to actually show a lobby if you don't want to, but you can do. But for this, for Ninja Birds X, I just want it. The player just clicks the button, and then it goes straight into the game, and then that's it. There's no choosing lobbies or because the game is very casual, and for most players out there, maybe they don't know what. A lobby or a room is they just want to go straight into the game and that's fine it doesn't matter at all so it tries to join a random room if it can't join a random room it tries to create a room and that's what this code does here so it says hey we couldn't join a random room so let's create a room great so we've just created a room and then what happens is that will just sit there and wait until another player joins the room so and then the game will start and once another player joins the room then we get this called here on photon player connected and this is when the uh, this is when the sort of gameplay code comes into play. So it says that uh, the first player that was waiting, this uh, uh, the one that made the room, that's it's not your turn. So I make it my turn. It's false. I put up a plane so that they can't tap or interact with the game in any way. Uh, and then what we do, photon view the RPC. RPC call means random. Uh, is it random procedure call or uh, something? It calls. <laughs> basically calls the same function on the other client's uh, machine. So for example, we're calling make it my turn on all of the other players, not on our machine, okay? So make it my turn is basically, uh, let me find it. It's a little bit messy, this script, I'm sorry about this. Make it my turn is here, and then what it does, uh, um, uh, there we go, so it makes it my turn to true, it removes that, that plane that blocks the input so that the player can now drag the bird and throw it uh, and then it tells them as well hey it's your turn and then what happens is this little bird that you throw that then that can be interacted with the player whose turn it is can then throw that bird when the bird goes hits all of the uh, uh, the apples and then goes past the bottom then it, it that bird code basically sends a, a message back to this script and says uh, make it not my turn make it the opponent's turn now okay so um, uh, da, da, da. so yeah we're saying hey it's their turn it's not your turn anymore and then we're doing a a remote procedure call RPC to spawn a bird object on the other player so they now have a bird that appears 
and then we're telling them, hey, it's your turn now. So we're sending the message back. But notice that we're saying photos and targets dot others because if we don't say others, then it will also call this this function on the, the the local machine as well, the machine that's actually trying to send that. So we want to send that to the other ones. Um, let me just think what else I can explain. I don't want to go into all of this code here because, to be honest, it's still a little bit confusing for me. I've sort of done this step by step and tried to figure it out. Um, well, basically what happens is when when uh, one of the players reaches 20 points we we check the score so let me just quickly find that there we go so update my score in opponent's game and then update a score so what happens is every half a second is it just sends the score to the other player so uh, whenever this bird hits an apple and gets an extra two points or one point then it sends that message to the other player so each player constantly knows the opponent's score and then what we do is uh, we check here, if my score is bigger than 20, which uh, score needed to finish the match, then, um, then we say I won. And I won show, is called on the local machine here. So here it shows, the, uh, it shows that blocking plane which stops the input and it also shows a message to say, hey, uh, you won, here's my score. And then it basically... Um, if you click play again, then it will disconnect and it will go to the menu screen and then you can start over again by clicking play again. If you didn't lose, sorry, if you if you lost, then in the same machine it will call this remote procedure call again and it will say I lost. So I'll basically, if this player won, then it says locally on the same machine, oh, I won. And it will send a message to the other player saying, oh, I lost. Okay, so that, that gets called from this machine. And then that will also show the message to say, hey, game over, and then the play again button, and then it shows the scores as well. So uh, I'm going to leave the code description at that, guys, because that's that's pretty much, um, you know, the, the very, very basics of it. And I still need to get my head around it a little bit because this is a very basic, uh, uh, a very basic game at the moment. If you are jumping into online mobile code, what I would suggest, guys, is doing something very basic like this. And just sending the score back and forth between players is probably the simplest way to do it, I think. So, for example, what you can do is you have a game of, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a game like uh, Space Invaders, just for example. So this player is playing Space Invaders and you have 60 seconds to get the highest score. This player also has 60 seconds and they have 60 seconds to get the highest score. Um, so they'll play together and after 60 seconds is finished, then it will send this score to this player... 60 seconds finished, they'll send the score to that player, and then it'll just say, oh, uh, oh, you won. You got 120 points, and you got 110 points, and then that's it. So you don't have to synchronize any position data or, or any, uh, any sort of update data all the time. It's just a score data. That's all it is, and you just wait for the other player to send the score. If you want to show the other player the score more often, you can you can set a timer. You can do an invoke repeating so that all it does is every 0 0.5 seconds or every one second, it shows the play, other player's score. So that there's more a little bit more real time interaction there. If you know what I mean? It shows the score, and it, you sort of you know you're trying to beat the other player during that 60 seconds. So that's the that's the way I would start. This is my suggestion if you are getting into online code. Uh, and as I mentioned here, I'll, I'll explain this more in a later video. And I said to everybody that I will do more tutorial videos. I think the next step is really to do a, a, an online tutorial video so you guys can learn a little bit more about online code. Uh, but for now, anyway, what I'd like you to do, it'd be awesome if you guys come and join me. This video is partly to sort of say, hey, come and play me and let me know what you think. I need feedback and I need to, uh, I need to know if this game is fun or if it's boring or what's the next big things to do inside of the game. Uh, and I just need to tell people about the game, of course. Uh, the online uh, web mobile space is just as busy and competitive as the online mobile space. And so marketing is a, is a, is a whole other <laughs> art, I suppose, to the games as well. But uh, here's the link. You can just go to congregate.com. Uh, this is the website here, congregate.com. And you can just do a search in here for Ninja Birds X. Uh, you don't need to sign up or anything to play the game. Uh, you just need to sign up if you want to uh, do messages or add friends. So you can just click on that top one here, and then it'll load Ninja Birds X. Okay, and I think I've got a couple more points here. Uh, yeah, 
Other thing is, it's available on iPhone, it's available on Android. Uh, if you do go on those and download it, it is free. And please give me a rating as well. That, that always helps us and, and you know gives us some really good feedback to, to show what's good or what's not so good about the game. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, please drop a, drop a comment. I'm trying to catch up more on the on the questions uh, recently as well. Uh, I do always read them. A great big thank you for anyone who's who sent a comment or a question, uh, and a great big big thanks for those people who have helped the others in the tutorials and you know given their code and and said, hey, this is how it works. Uh, that really supports me a lot. Uh, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the video a few days ago as well. Uh, today is March the 29th, 2013. Just so you know. Uh, a few days ago, I did a video of me playing Gradius on the Super Nintendo emulator. I'm going to do some more of those because I think it was just fun to sort of chat to everyone and, and you know, uh, share some gameplay. You know, I don't always work. I need to relax a little bit more. Uh, please, uh, as well, obviously, like and subscribe to the channel and, and let me know if you, if you have any questions. Uh, anyway, everyone, have a great week. Uh, happy developing, and I will chat to you all very soon. Okay, bye.